here, the trees are just the beginning. The number of species of mammals, birds, amphibians, wildflowers, ferns, mosses, lichens, fungi, and insects are staggering. It's hard to write without running out of superlatives, for these are among the greatest forces on Earth. Forests peopled with centuries of past lives, enormous logs and snags that foster more life after their death than before. The canopy is a multi-layered sculpture of vertical complexity. From the lowest moss on the forest floor to the wisps of lichen hanging high in the treetops, raggedy and uneven from the gaps produced by centuries of wind throw, disease, and storms. This seeming chaos belies the tight web of interconnections between them all. Stitched with filaments of fungi, silk of spiders, and silver threads of water. Alone, is a word without meaning in this forest. On a day like this, when the fiddleheads are unfurling and the air is petal soft, I am awash in longing. Sometimes I wish I could photosynthesize so that just by being, just by shimmering at the meadow's edge or floating lazily on a pond, I could be doing the work of the world while standing silent in the sun. The shadowy hemlocks and the weaving grasses are spinning out sugar molecules and passing them on to hungry mouths and mandibles, all the while listening to the warblers and watching the light dance on water. Instead, I live vicariously through the photosynthesis of others. I am not the vibrant leaves on the forest floor. I am the woman with the basket, and how I fill it is a question that matters. Action on behalf of life transforms. Because the relationship between self and the world is reciprocal, it is not a question of first getting enlightened or saved and then acting. As we work to heal the earth, the earth heals us. Even a wounded world is feeding us. Even a wounded world holds us, giving us moments of wonder and joy. I choose joy over despair, not because I have my head in the sand, but because joy is what the earth gives me daily, and I must return the gift.